Welcome to Aurelia's Strike. Hope you're excited. Now, you may be sitting there saying, hey, that looks a lot like Sword of uh, Fire and Ice. No, it's not. Uh, this is Minecraft Sword, so uh, you got your genres mixed up. But yes, welcome to Aurelia. Hope you're excited. Uh, we are playing Aurelia today, and I had a lot of fun building her. What did we end up going with Aurelia? Um, I kind of ended up building this Voltron build, which I'll kind of explain as we get into the deck tech. But let's start off with Aurelia herself. So we have Flying and Mentor, and then at the beginning of combat in your turn, choose up to one target creature you control. Uh, that creature gets plus two, plus zero. If it, it gains Trample if it's red, and it gains Vigilance if it is white. Now, one of the cool things about Aurelia is that she can target herself with her own ability. So when I was looking to see what sort of build I wanted to go for, I decided to kind of build into this Voltron deck. I love building Voltron decks to where you get down one creature, stick as many pieces of equipment on it as possible, and just start swinging in at your opponent, making them have some sort of answer for this huge creature that you have on the battlefield. And plus, it fits in really well. She's also got two swords in her hand, so... Why not? She's meant to be some sort of Voltron creature. Uh, if she didn't have that ability to target herself, it would probably be more of a creature-based deck, but uh, hey, if she can target herself with that ability, that's exactly what we want to do, is have our big creature have Vigilance, that way we can swing in and attack, and at the same time kind of leave her up for defense. Now, if you're building Voltron, one of the big things that you do need is weapons. Uh, we've got some really good stuff in here, stuff like Sword of Feast and Famine, Sword of Body and Mind, Sunforger. We want to be able to take advantage of the combat steps, and once we're dealing damage to a opponent, it. We're going to get that Sword of the Feast and the Famine trigger. They're going to untap their land. We're going to, get to untap our lands. They have to discard a card. Uh, sword of Body and Mind is going to give us another token on the battlefield. Basically, we're trying to get as much value as possible out of our weapons. Um, also, stuff like Tenza and Hero's Blade. Um, those are really good in this deck, especially Tenza. Quick Creature is going to get plus one, plus one. If it's Legendary, it gets plus two, plus two. Then, if it's red, it gets trampled. So it's basically kind of almost made for Aurelia. You know, a lot of these red Voltron decks, Tenza is such an all-star. And then also, Hero's Blade. I love this card. Um, you're going to be able to get it down for two mana. Once you get down Aurelia at four, uh, you're going to be in a pretty good position to get Hero's Blade on Aurelia and then start swinging in at your opponent. Now, let's say that something does happen to Aurelia. Unfortunately, we are in war. We're in combat. Sometimes stuff happens to the commander. Um, so we're going to have lieutenants in the deck. These are going to be people that can take advantage of the equipment that we have on the battlefield. Uh, Battlemaster, Valduk, Prophetic Flame Speaker, they all give us some sort of plan B. So let's say that Aurelia gets sent back to the command zone a bunch of times. We can get these down, equip some of that equipment onto her, and then have some sort of game plan backup to get going. And especially with Valduk, you know, get a lot of the equipment on there, get those elementals going. That's exactly what this deck wants to do, is basically just kind of throw the kitchen sink at our opponent. Also running Arm uh, Armory Automaton and Etched champion uh, both of these are going to be great options armory automaton is such a good card it enters the battlefield you can attach all equipment to it and then um, whenever it attacks you get to attach all equipment to it and then with etched champion we're running a ton of artifacts in here so once we get that metal craft online we have protection from colors that's definitely going to allow us to have some sort of uh, kind of voltron creature that's almost going to be unblockable uh, depending on what sort of deck you're playing against now outside of the lieutenants let's say that we've got ourselves in a position we've got our opponent corner we're going to go for that final strike uh, so we have stuff like Seize the Day, Aurelia's Fury, and Blood Mist. These are going to be really high impact cards that allow us to kind of put a lot of pressure on our opponent. Uh, Seize the Day, let's say we have more than enough mana. You know, it's really not that crazy with the amount of mana rocks that we're running that we can go for a Seize the Day for four mana and then flash it back for three. And that might be more than enough to uh, kind of take care of your opponent and the fact that Aurelia's triggers do stack, you're going to get that additional bonus at the beginning of your combat step, which is always nice. And of course, Aurelia's Fury uh, tapping down the board to make sure it's kind of clear the way for you. And Blood Mist. I love Blood Mist. It's such a fun card. I can always I always like to imagine the uh, the Blood Mist kind of swinging around and taking control of uh, whatever creatures on the board. Um, also, Walkers. This is going to be a great deck for Planeswalkers because we want to put our opponent in a position to where they're trying to devote a lot of resources to our Voltron creature. So simply getting down something like a Johnny or Nahiri, which we can sit back and kind of tick up like that, it's going to make it hard for them to kind of, they're going to have to really prioritize how they're going to take care of our board state. Uh, Elspeth is going to be a great for the deck. It's going to give us a soldier that we can equip some of that equipment onto. And at the same time, the other plus one is going to give it that plus three, plus three, and gain flying. Um, it already does have, already already does have flying, but giving that plus three, plus three is always nice. And then a Johnny is going to be great for us to kind of tap down some of our opponent's creatures. And then with Nahiri, once again, getting that token on the battlefield. If we get to that ultimate, we end up with a nice weapon on the battlefield. Now, last but not least, it's going to be removal. We are in Red and white, so we have access to a ton of really good stuff. Uh, Path to Exile, Swords to Plowshare, 
all your good stuff. Uh, Dispatch actually works out really well in this deck. The amount of artifacts we are running, you're pretty much always going to have Metalcraft online. So having that third copy of Swords or uh, Path to Exile is always nice to have in the deck. And since we are in red, you can have some sort of board control. Uh, Mizium Mortars and Roast is going to be a great way to kind of get some of that pressure uh, dealt to your opponent. But that is going to be it for the deck tech. I have two really fun gameplay videos up for you right now. So stick around and watch. Thanks. Welcome to Aurelia Strike. As far as our opening hand goes, yeah, I like it. We've got uh, two two lanes in our hand. Beautiful basis. Look at those. <laughs> Give myself a pat on the back. Uh, but yeah, we'll go and keep on this one. I, I like that. Hopefully we do get a few more mana rocks, but um, we can get lucky with Stoneforge Mystic and search up sort of the Animist if we need to get that going. So I kind of like this opening hand. But yes, welcome to some Aurelia. hope you're excited for some Boros. I think this is the... Uh, Probably the second Boro stack that I've ever built for my channel. So, <laughs> should be pretty interesting. Uh, let's go and get down planes. Let's go and go for uh, Sigarda's Aid. Let's go and get that down, and then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. We are playing Aurelia. Uh, flying and mentor uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn up to one target creature uh, choose up to one target creature you control until end of turn that creature gets plus two plus zero gains trample if it's red and gains vigilance if it is white now one of the interesting things about Aurelia is that Aurelia can target herself so when I was trying to figure out what sort of build I wanted to go for Aurelia I really wanted to build some sort of Voltron deck especially since she can target herself so that's kind of what we're get, we've got going on um, I will explain what we have kind of a little bit in greater detail here in a second, but uh, once we get our turn going, I'll kind of talk about that. And put us off to a uh, really, really nice start with Joda. <laughs> got up, we got Vampiric Tutor into Mana Crypt into Dark Steel Forge. So um, let's see what sort of fun stuff we have in store for us. Uh, let's go and lead off with uh, Mountain. And I think at this point, I, I really want to see if we can't get ahead on mana as quickly as possible. So let's go and get down Boros Signet, and then we'll go and pass the turn to our opponent. We're playing against Joda, uh, flying, and then you may pay Wooberg for uh, the mana cost of spells. You may, you can play Wooberg uh, rather than pay the mana cost for spells that you cast. So there we go. Um, they've got a 10 mana spell. They can pay just one of each color uh, to cast that spell. So we'll see what sort of Joda build we're up against. And uh, really, you don't really know what you're going to get against Joda because... Uh, Tends to be some kind of good stuff deck sometimes. It's always fun to play against it, though. And then we're drawn to Rugged Prairie. Uh, let's go to get down Rugged Prairie. So as far as next turn goes, we can get down Aurelia and start putting some pressure on our opponent. They might have grabbed a Prismatic Omen off of that Vampiric Tutor. Do we want to go for Aurelia at this point right now, or do we want to use Stone Force to search up some piece of equipment? You know what? If we want to keep up with that mana, I think I don't mind going... Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's go for Stoneforge Mystic. Let's just do some setting up. Let's go for Stoneforge Mystic. Let's go and grab Sword of the Animist. Yes, we're going to use that ability. Worst case scenario, we just simply start swinging in with this, um, Stoneforge Mystic. We just need to get those lane drops going. Alright, let's go and get down Sword of the Animist. That way we can equip it next turn and swing in. If we do hit the lane drop, then we can also still go and get down. Actually, yeah, we're going to equip it on there. I just forget about Sigarda's aid. Yes, yes, I would love to do that. That actually allows us to get down Aurelia for next turn, not to worry about um, making the land drop to swing in. So uh, let's go and pass the turn to our opponent. And uh, But yeah, as far as the Voltron build, if you don't know what Voltron means, maybe you're new to magic. Uh, Voltron basically means you're getting down one creature and trying to put as much stuff on it as possible, uh, whether it's enchantments or artifacts. Um, but that's pretty much the game plan. So you can see where we get down Aurelia. Uh, we give her that nice plus two, plus uh, zero bonus. Get down stuff like Sword of the Animus. Get down Ring of Thune. Uh, we have Sword of Feast and Famine in here. Sort of body and mind. Uh, once we get those onto Aurelia, start swinging in our opponent and really just start putting some really good pressure on them. It's always, um, I don't know, some of the best magic you can play. Now, we do have Anger of the Gods at this point right now. And that'd be definitely a good way to take care of Joda. And I think I like going for that. Okay, um, let's go and push in because that's going to be whenever this creature attacks, we'll at least be able to get that going. Yeah, I like that. Let's go and push in with Stoneforge Mystic. And let's go and grab Mountain. Let's go and have Mountain enter the battlefield. Let's see if our opponent wants to offer up any sort of blocks. We might be able to get him for two damage, but if they do block, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Either way, we're still going to be going for Anger of the Gods. All right, so let's go and go for that. All right, so we're going to go for Anger of the Gods. Deals three damage to each creature, and then it'd be exiled. So that's going to exile Stoneforge Mystic and exile Joda. So that does put our opponent on having some sort of you know, free counter spell in the hand, like Force of Will. But we can see that it went back to the command zone, so we're A-OK. -okay. Um, anything else, we'll go and pass the turn to our opponent. 
So hopefully next turn we can at least go ahead and get down uh, Aurelia. That will be five total mana. And then next turn, uh, we can kind of start going from there. Now if we do hit the land drop, we can get down Hero's Blade, and then whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield, we can attach it to it. Now since we do have Sigarda's Aid, that kind of negates that. But if we didn't have Sigarda's Aid, this is one of my favorite pieces of Voltron to run. It's plus three, plus two, equip for four, but being able to equip it onto your commander for free is one of the best feelings that you can get going. I love it. It's everything that you want to be doing in commander. And so if you're ever looking to build some sort of Voltron build, highly recommend uh, throwing Hero's Blade in there. It fits into pretty much any sort of deck that you're building. All right, so sort of body and mind, protection from green and blue, which will definitely allow us to kind of start pushing past on Joda. You know what, let's go and get down Aurelia. Uh, I like that. Let's go and get down Aurelia. And unfortunately, we don't have anything that we can equip for one, but let's go and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, what we can do, we're going to go and target Aurelia with that ability. Just kind of show them show them we mean business. We have a 4-5, and kick it back over there. Now, with Sigarda's Aid, you may cast or an equipment spells as if they had Flash, and then whatever equipment enters the battlefield, you can attach it to target creature you control. So if we want to, um, Joda does have flying. Um, so we'll kind of see how we want to sequence this sort of body and mind. But there's different things that we can do is basically just kind of flashing our equipment. And it's kind of fun to imagine using Sigarda's aid in that manner and that uh, Aurelia is swinging across or she's getting ready to fly across. And then you just kind of throw a sort of body and mind as she catches it as she's flying in the air. I don't know. It's just a really beautiful mental image to kind of imagine. So that's something that we can do. But uh, we'll probably still just go and get down sort of body and mind first. That way we can still swing in our opponent. All right, so we draw into Mizium Mortars. Yeah, let's go and go for Sword of Body and Mind. And then we can still flash in Ring of Thune or Hero's Blade. Yeah, let's do that. That's going to allow us to at least kind of get some of those wolf tokens going. Okay, so that's going to make Rayleigh at a 4-7. Uh, it's going to push in. It does have protection from green and blue, which Joda is blue, so it's going to allow us to at least kind of swing past on Joda. Swinging in with Rayleigh, and then let's go ahead and drop in uh, Hero's Blade uh, before we get a combat damage. We're going to throw it from the sidelines as Aurelia catches it. Oh, this is beautiful. Dual wielding. Okay, so we've got a 9-9 swinging across. Uh, we're going to get some wolf tokens, and we're going to dump a few cards into our opponent's graveyard. Oh, look at that. That is uh, that's a whole mess of stuff that we are glad not <laughs> glad we're not facing it. Okay, so we get in for 9. It's going to be 9 commander damage. Knocks him down to 15, and then anything else we're going to pass to turn to our opponent. Now, with Sword of the Animus, we can put it onto the wolf token and get that kind of that land untap step. They can kind of start going from there. But you can definitely kind of see what we're up against with the Joda deck, where it's just basically just five-color good stuff or uh, five-color stuff that you just don't really want to run into. And so hopefully we can uh, keep, kind of keep the pressure up on our opponent as we uh, go for this Voltron damage. Okay, opponent's going to go for, uh-oh, <laughs> his opponent's going to go for Ulamog. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, destroy target permanent. That's going <laughs> to, poor Rayleigh, she's going to hit get hit out of the sky. Um, okay, so it's still going to leave the wolf token. And that's going to, whew. And unfortunately with uh, Mizzy Mortars, that's not going to do much on our side of the battlefield. Um, we can go for Elspeth. Target creature. We do have... Um, Big like six mana Elspeth in here, but let's see what we can dig up because that Ulamog swinging across is going to be absolutely brutal for us. Let's see, oh, Rogue's Passage. Well, that's going to allow us to at least get in some damage. The only thing is, is it's going to keep us off any sort of uh, activations going for some of these uh, pieces of equipment. You know what? I think we need to go for Elspeth because that's going to hopefully give us an additional token. Yeah, maybe we can beat this. We're going to give it a shot. Um, let's go ahead and tap out Rogue's Passage. Let's go and get down Elspeth. And then we can get down Sword of Body. And my, it's not looking good. That Annihilator is going to be really hard for us to, to kind of uh, take care of on the back end. But we're going to try our best. Let's get down Sword of Feast and Famine, Sword of Body and Mind onto the Wolf Token. It's going to be protection from blue and green. We're going to go for the uh, Elspeth activation, going for that uh, plus one target creature gains flying. That will be seven. <laughs> Got the flying wolf. Um, let's go and swing across. We'll get an additional wolf token, which will hopefully kind of negate some of that Annihilator at four. Okay, so we get the wolf coming across. It's going to knock our opponent down to eight. 
and we'll get an additional wolf token to kind of mill them out a little bit more. And that good, uh, thankfully with that Kozilek hitting the graveyard, it's going to shuffle all the stuff back into the library. So I'm okay with that. Uh, typically with decks like that, they probably have some sort of way to kind of go for a reanimator strategy. And then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, if Ulamog does swing in, we're going to be able to take the 10 hit, no problem. That's going to be 10 damage, puts us down to 20. Um, the Annihilator 4, uh, that's going to be pretty brutal. So we'll see how they decide to want to swing in with Ulamog. Uh, basically, at this point right now, we want to protect Elspeth. So um, if they do swing in with Ulamog, we'll leave this Wolf token up and then kind of block on Ulamog. Even if they do swing in with Joda. Um, that puts us in a position to where hopefully we can um, still kind of protect Elspeth, or even if it does get down to one, we can still use that plus one ability to give our wolf token plus three, plus three. Uh, so we'll see what sort of spell they rip into, but um, yeah. Uh-oh, Plague Wind. <laughs> okay, that's going to get it with the Joda. So like, they get the Annihilator 4, I guess we get rid of Sigarda's Aid, Sword, and then sort of Body and Mind. That's one of the downsides, and I'm not, you know, Eldrazi is Eldrazi. But I just, I hate the Annihilator trigger. I can't stand it. Um, it's one of those, like, I say it not from a salty standpoint. I say it from a standpoint of, like, I wish I could go back and, like, hey, don't ever put this in Magic. Magic would be a better game without it. Uh, let's get rid of Elspeth. Um, I like Heroes of Blade because that allows us to maybe get down a legendary creature. Uh, Sword of Body Mind is going to allow us to push past on Joda. Let's get rid of Sword of the Animist. And then, I guess... Yeah, I like Hero's Blade. Uh, Sigarda's Aid. And then I really don't really want to get any sort of rid of our mana rocks. Um, I'm just going to get rid of Mountain, I guess, at this point right now. So that's going to be four permanents we sacrifice. There'll be Ulamog swinging across for Tim. And I think they did declare Ulamog swinging into Elspeth. So at least we're able to kind of negate that win. Hopefully we draw into one of our one mana spot removals. That'll allow us to dispatch. And we do. Oh, there we go. We do. We draw on the dispatch. I'll take it. Um, let's get uh, Aurelia pop back up. Um, how can we get out from underneath this? So we go for dispatch on Ulamog. We do have three artifacts. Um, they're not completely tapped out. Aurelia is going to be six total mana. One, two, three, four, five. We can still get down Bastion Protector. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go for dispatch on Ulamog. Because we do have three artifacts. That's going to exile it. So we're going to get the uh, the Boros Legion to get rid of Ulamog. Uh, it's going to get down Bastion Protector. That was a beautiful draw. Uh, it's going to get down Bastion Protector. And then thankfully, once we get down Bastion Protector, that's going to give Aurelia um, Indestructible whenever we swing down. Uh, or get her down next turn. Anything else, we're going to pass the turn to our opponent. So... They do have two cards in the hand, so we'll see what they do have going on. Hopefully we can kind of stabilize from here. Um, that's one of the good things about Voltron is that uh, we are looking at Joda on that side of the battlefield. They are sitting at eight. So simply just getting something like Sword of Body and Mind onto Bastion Protector, getting that protection past Joda, usually might be enough. Especially, if, let's see if this Mana Crypt trigger makes him lose three damage. Oh, yes, there we go. And then Mana Vault trigger, they don't have to pay for that. So that basically puts us in a position to where we can just put Sword of Body and Mind onto Bastion Protector and then push past on Joda. It's going to depend on what they have in the hand and what they draw into, but uh, fingers crossed we'll at least get it on this one. Okay, opponent's going to get down Zendikar Resurgent, and that's going to be uh, whenever you tap a land for mana, uh, add one mana that can produce, and then whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Now at this point right now, they're stuck at uh, just simply just four mana, so they don't even have enough, oh, excuse me, they have uh, at least uh, eight mana that they can mess around with, so that does give them access to something like Joda. Uh, going for that Wooberg activation, but let's see what they have to show for it. Okay, they end up going for Supreme Verdict. All right, we can take that. They still have Mana Crypt, so we might be able to squeeze out a Mana Crypt win. <laughs> Which is some of the most wholesome wins that you can get. All right, so we draw into Roast. Um, unfortunately, we can't get down Aurelia. I guess we just go for Ring of Thune. Yeah, because Aurelia is going to be six total mana. Yeah, six, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, let's go to get down Ring of Thune. And then we'll just go and pass the turn to our opponent. Unfortunately, both of our removal spells are going to be Sorcery Speed. Um, so depending on what they do get down, we can at least go for Roast or um, Mizzy and Mortars if they get some sort of, you know, Avenger of Zendikar kind of game plan going. With Mizzy and Mortars, that allows us to kind of clean the board up. Uh, we do need to hit that sixth land drop, though, to be online for that overload. 
but hopefully with this, at least us having two pieces of removal on the hand, I feel pretty good about uh, trying to get a Mana Crypt win in some form or fashion, because really it's going to take two Mana Crypt triggers for them to, uh, to the, for them to lose the game, and I'm not above losing, uh, getting a Mana Crypt trigger win. Okay, opponent will go for Joda. Unfortunately, it does give them an additional card draw off of the Zendikar Resurgent. But um, with us having Museum Orders, we still get to at least take care of Joda. So I'm A-OK -okay with that. And they do get down Mana Reflection. So they have a ton of mana. Uh, thankfully, uh, hopefully they just don't have a lot of uh, access to a lot of card draw. That's the main thing. Alright, so let's get Ring of Thune. We have no creature to equip to. Uh, Ring of Thune trigger. Sorry. And then we draw to Valduke. Ooh. All right, so we get that down. That is a legendary creature. This could be Hero's Blade. Yeah, that was a beautiful draw. Okay, let's go and get down Valduke. <laughs> What's up, buddy? I'm glad to see you. Um, let's go ahead and go for a Rugged Prairie. Go Boro Signet. Actually, is there any certain way we can see? Yeah, either way, we're going to be tapping down from one of the other pieces, like Sword of Body and Mind. Now, the only downside is that's going to trigger at the beginning of combat. So... But at least it's going to be two different uh, creatures swinging across on our opponent. Uh, it's going to get down Rogue's Passage. Beautiful. He's got the uh, the Forge Hammer too. He's ready to get those elementals going. So we're going to have Valduk enter the battlefield. It's going to be um, Hero's Blade entering, putting on it. Now basically what we can do right now is we could burn Mizium Mortars on Joda. That would allow us to swing in for just one elemental, put them down to one. Um, I kind of like getting down another piece of equipment, something like sort of body and mind. Um, because that at least allows us to get down two elementals and forces them to at least block with Joda. So that way we still hold on to Mizium Mortars. Alright, so we're going to go to the beginning of our combat. And then there we go. Look at those elementals coming out of the forge. I love it. Alright, swinging in for two, three, ones. Okay, there we go. All right, it's going to knock them down to one, so it's basically going to put them on the Mana Crypt trigger. <laughs> I love it. Then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Let's see if we can survive that Ulamog. Oh, my gosh. Um, one of the cool things about Valduk is that if you look into the Forge, uh, you can see, um, yeah, because they still have to pay the Mana Vault trigger, too. Um, it's going to tap down a few more things to make sure they don't lose that one life, and then they still have to dodge this Mana Crypt trigger. So we're going to go and pull the rules up and see if, uh, see if they survive this one or not. Let's see which one they choose. Come on. <laughs> oh, they won the flip. Okay, so they're sitting at one at this point right now. Um, thankfully, at least next turn, we can go for a Ring of Thune onto Valduk. That's going to be a few more creatures on the battlefield, a few more elementals. And then, uh, well, if they have some sort of removal, so be it. But uh, And then also, it's a good thing that they had to tap down some of their mana to untap Mana Vault to make sure they don't die to that one life. So um, let's see what they have to show for the turn. All right, opponent's going to go for Idolic Tutor. Uh, search your library for an enchantment card, reveal it, put it in your hand. Now, the only downside is with Idolic Tutor, if they're going to grab some sort of stacks effects, we did see Ghostly Prison um, in their graveyard earlier. Uh, Sunbird's Invocation. Okay, so that's going to grab off of that. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X card your library, exit that converted mana cost, and then, oh yeah, basically just kind of cast a spell for, for free. So let's see where they're going to go off of that. Okay, so they do get down Sunbird's Invocation. That does leave at least six mana left on the battle. Um, six mana in their mana pool. Let's see what else they're going to show for it with Sunbird's Invocation. Like I mentioned, oh, they're going to have Utter End. Okay, and that allows them to grab uh, four, four cards out of the reveal zone. And so they, they basically, oh, and that, that's the only downside is they had the Archangel they could have gone for, but Imperial Seal was one of the cards they could have got off of uh, that Sunbird's Invocation. And with Imperial Seal, they would have lost two life if they cast it. So. Okay, so no Ring of Thune. Hopefully, I don't think we have any haste option out of the deck. Let's see what we draw into. Draw into Fire Diamond, which is not really uh, what we wanted to see. And once again, we are still stuck on a five mana. One, two, three, four, five. Um, let's go ahead and get down Fire Diamond. I guess that's all we can do right now. Our opponent dodged Valduk's uh, <laughs> little flame thing over there. Let's go ahead and get down Fire Diamond. And then, yeah, we're going to go and pass the turn. Hopefully, once again, they've got zero cards in hand. They've got some really good stuff. they got Mana Reflection, Zendikar. And so they can get some good stuff going. Let's get the chat pulled up. They whiffed last time on not losing on Mana Crypt. Let's see if they get it. Oh, yes, they lost the they lost the flip. I think this is it. Yes, there we go. All right, let's go down to negative two. I will take it. That is a very good Boros win right there. Um, so you can definitely see what the deck's trying to do. 
<laughs> good game. Um, so it feels good to get a Mana Crypt trigger. Um, but yeah, you can see what the deck's trying to do. We're trying to get as much equipment onto the battlefield as possible. You can see we were able to beat some sort of Annihilator 4. Uh, we got down Valduk, got a few of those uh, elementals on the battlefield. Basically, you just want to be able to take advantage of having a ton of pieces of equipment on the battlefield, and we certainly did that. So we are able to take care of the five-color circus that is Joda. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Welcome to Aurelia Strike. As far as our opening hand goes, we've got one land in our hand, and I love everything in here, but you can't keep a one lander, um, especially in Boros. Ooh, yes, this is exactly what we want with some really good card advantage, or at least some sort of card draw. And then also Sunforger, which is always a uh, really fun card to play. Hey, awesome. Get that pumped up. But yeah, so have a uh, subscriber of the channel. So it's always cool to get to meet people in the, uh, in the uh, commander room. Yeah, so in fact, if you want to play Commander and want to play against me, head on over there. That's where I play. Uh, we'll be keeping this one. See if the scry is. Insult to injury. Man, I don't think that's exactly what we want. Well, either way, we're going to be cracking for Faithless Looting. So let's just go and put that on the bottom right now because technically it doesn't matter. So let's go and get down Windswept Heath. Let's go and crack Windswept Heath and then uh, get Faithless Looting going. Start burning some of those books. And uh, I don't know. I've always loved the art on Faithless Looting. It's just that guy looks like he's about to... Uh, Go to town. <laughs> Just looting the church right there. I was going to grab... Ooh. Let's grab Plateau. There we go. They make it so tiny that sometimes you get worried you're going to click on the wrong land. All right, so we'll go for uh, Faith is Looting. We draw Stoneforge and Mountain. We have to discard two cards. Uh, do, actually, I like Stoneforge. It's going to be... We can cash that into Sword of the Animist. Um, let's go and get rid of Planes. And I really do like Sunforger. But I think, I, yeah, I like holding on to Tormenting Voice. So let's get rid of Planes. Let's get rid of Sunforger. Um, Stoneforge Mystic, we at least kind of turn that into some piece of equipment. Probably sort of the Animist, uh, now that I think about it. Because that will at least allow us to get some pretty good stuff going. And our opponent will just get down a uh, Elvish Mystic on their turn. So I'll cover Commanders in just a second. Uh, let's go and go for, we'll draw the Command Beacon. Let's go and get down a Mountain. Let's go and go for Stoneforge and Mystic. I was going to grab that Sword of the Animus. That way we can at least go and get down Sword of the Animus onto Stoneforge Mystic and then start swinging at our opponent, making sure we hit those land drops. There we go. Grab Sword of the Animus and then anything else will go and pass the turn to our opponent. We are playing Aurelia, a flying in Mentor. Then at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control until end of turn that creature gets plus two plus zero, gains trample if it's red, and gains vigilance if it is white. Uh, we're playing against Prime Speaker Zagana. Um, whenever Prime Speaker enters the battlefield, enters the battlefield, X plus one counters on it, where X is the number of uh, the greatest power among creatures that you control. And then whenever Prime Speaker enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to its power. Oh, nice. Yeah, so our opponent, they're playing, uh, basically, I think they said this version of their deck is going to be the uh, the deck that hasn't released on Magic Online yet, which is the uh, the slumbering one. I can't remember his name. I think they said it in the chat. Um, yeah, I'm not going to attempt to say that because I butcher a ton of names to begin with anyway, so <laughs> uh, let's go and get down, uh, let's get down Command Beacon. Let's go and go for Sword of the Animist. Yeah, I'm okay with Sword of the Animist. Well, do we want to... Either, yeah, we'd have to get really lucky off that. Let's go to get down Sword of the Animist, and then we'll worry about what we want to discard off of Tormenting Voice. Um, if we wanted to, we could go for Raelia's Fury, but uh, with the Prime Speaker caring about a creature with the greatest power, we're just going to hold on to Raelia's Fury at this point right now, because who knows, we might need to use Aurelia to kind of use Aurelia's Fury to kind of clear the way for us to swing in uh, with some good Voltron damage. Uh, but we did cover both commanders, so it is free time. We can talk about whatever we want. That's going to be this Voltron build of Aurelia. Uh, if you don't know what Voltron is, uh, draw the Hedron Archive. Ooh, that is tempting. Do we want to go for that? That's really going to open us up on mana if we get down the Hedron Archive. I think I like that. Um, instead of swinging with Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go for Flooded Strand. And I'm going to go ahead and shock this one in because Boros is kind of weird when it comes to their double red or uh, needing some white this turn or something like that. Uh, it's going to get down Hedron Archive. Oh, dang it. We could have equipped the Sword of the Animus onto Stormtrooper. Sorry about that. I was reaching over to grab my, my water bottle. <laughs> I was trying to take a quick sip while I passed the turn. To, that way I don't have to edit the video that like that. But yeah, we could have got that onto Stoneforge Mystic. But we'll try it next turn. Uh, we, we can at least get down Aurelia and put Sword of the uh, Sword of the Animus onto Aurelia. So. Okay, so we've got 2-2 two, two swinging across. Yeah, that's one of those. Unfortunately, I'm just trying to... Uh, 
You know, one of the downsides to recording and giving commentary is you have to think of lines of play to go for. Uh, you have to think of like what you're going to be doing later on, how you want to swing in at the same time while delivering commentary. And at the same time, you can't sit there and pause. Um, and so you have to think while you're talking sometimes. And that's what kind of leads to a lot of these goofy mistakes like that. I'm just maybe thinking about, oh, I need to do this instead of that. Uh, let's go to get down to Ray Leo. It's going to be one, two. And I think either way, we would probably would have, would have wanted to get down sort of the animus onto Aurelia anyway. So we're going to get that onto her and then uh, put it at 3-6 than anything else. No. Uh, we're going to give that plus 2 plus 0 uh, to Stoneforge Mystic. It's going to be 3-2 with Vigilance. I was going to swing across with Stoneforge. Look at that. <laughs> Stoneforge, Stoneforge Mystic at 3-2. And then, uh, yeah, get him for 3, knock him down to 27, and we're going to pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, but, yeah, this is pretty much what we're wanting to do with Aurelia. Get her down. Use some stuff like Stoneforge Mystic. It does get some really good, uh, you know, a little bit of extra value off that Mentor. But for the most part, this is pretty much just a Voltron deck. And Voltron is putting as much equipment onto the battlefield and sticking onto one creature and making this really awesome creature. In fact, if you want to see a good um, a good Voltron build, well, not necessarily a good build, but a really fun build, uh, check out, uh, go to YouTube and search in Gitrog Hypnotoad. It's one of my favorite Voltron decks to play. It's Gitrog Enchantress, where we get a ton of enchantments onto Gitrog. And it is just... I don't man, it is such a fun deck to play. I, I love it. it. It doesn't win all the time, but it just makes for an interesting gameplay. Okay, so we draw the Source of Plowshare, which is just absolutely uh, pretty much what we want, because that's going to allow us to at least kind of stop Prime Speaker uh, getting that card draw going. So we, right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six total mana. Now we can get down to Jeek if we wanted to. Yeah, I think I like this. It's going to be haste. It's going to have that mentor ability. And we get some counters onto Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for that because there's not really much else that we can do. We can still leave up Source to Plowshare, too. Okay, uh, Tajik does have haste. And then there's no flying creature. So we can actually um, put the. I'm pretty sure we can. That's going to be power. Excuse me, with lesser power. Uh, let's go and target Aurelia. And that's what makes Aurelia's ability so well, is that we can power her up. And then whenever we get the Mentor trigger, we can basically just kind of put it on whatever that whatever we want. And we're going to put the Mentor trigger uh, mentor trigger onto Tajig. And we're going to use the sword. Uh, yes, definitely use that. Let's go and grab, uh, we'll go and grab planes off of that. And so we have 5-6 and a 4-3 swinging across. If our opponent wants to trade with one of these creatures and we want to keep Tajik on the battlefield, uh, we can use Source of Plowshare. But at this point right now, we want to make sure we can minimize uh, the amount of card draw that they're getting from Prime Speaker. So um, if we can trade with one of these 4-3s or the 4-3, uh, excuse me, the 3-3 three, three over the 4-3, I will definitely make that trade. Okay, so we're going to get Elvish Visionary jumping in front of Tajik with his nice... <laughs> He's so wild looking. All right, so we're knock our opponent down to 22. That's five commander damage, and then we'll go and pass turn to our opponent. Uh, but yeah, with Tajik, um, Tajik from the original, not original, but from the... Uh, from Return to Ravnica, he... Um, he just looks like a normal Boros guy. And this one right here, he's got like fur on his coat. He's got like, um, I guess it's fur on his blade or like fireworks. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with Tajik. And I know I always talk about it, but it just really, uh, it just really makes me laugh that he, uh, he's got a whole lot going on over there. Now, what we can't do is Swords to Plowshare with that uh, Chasm Skulker. It's going to be either way they're looking at a 4-3. Yeah, we kind of need to go ahead and go for Chasm Skulker because that's going to be a really good Prime Speaker. So let's go ahead and go for Swords of Plowshare. And plus, we just don't want a ton of Squid Tokens on the battlefield if we swing in. Okay, so that will allow them to draw at least four cards. And then uh, they'll be able to cast something with five or less from their hand without paying its mana cost. So we'll see if we can survive this. Ooh, and they get Tatyova. Which is a uh, really nice uh, hit off of Rishkar's expertise. And that's what makes these expertise cards so much fun is that, uh, you know, worst case scenario, you're looking at six mana, draw a ton of cards, then you get to cast something for free. It's just, I don't know, it's one of the best feelings of getting that expertise going. It just feels so good. I'm glad that uh, Wizards decided to do that. Because for a while there, they just got to the point where a lot of the powerful spells and magic were not spells or like instant or sorceries, they're basically just creatures. And so to have um, these expertise series, I don't know, it was really cool to see some of that. Okay, so we draw into Great Furnace. Um, do we want to go for Tormenting Voice? Yeah, 
I'd like to dig a little bit deeper if we can. Let's go discard Great Furnace. Draw, ooh, draw the Hero's Blade and Soul Ring. That, that's, that is lovely. Uh, it's going to get down Hero's Blade. Yeah, that should put it perfectly to where we can equip it onto Raylia. So it's going to get that on. That's going to be one, two, three, four. Now, one of the good things about Hero's Blade is that normally you can get it on for free, which is just everything that you want to be doing with the Voltron deck. But uh, still equipping it is really nice. So uh, it's going to give that additional power and toughness, that power bonus to Raylia. And so we're going to get that Mentor Trigger and Aurelia's Mentor Trigger too. Now this one right now, if they want to trade with uh, Goreclaw or Ted Yova, either way is perfectly fine. Yes, we're going to use that ability. Uh, let's go and grab another Plains. Alright, so we're at least going to be swinging across for 8. Um, we'll see if they want to block with Goreclaw or Ted Yova, but either way, you know, if they want to... I don't mind trading with Tajik. And then next turn, that puts us in a position to where we can also use Aurelia's Fury to hopefully, that's going to be, let's say, 13 commander damage. If we can get a few more artifacts somehow on the battlefield, we can use Aurelia's Fury to uh, hopefully maybe kind of deal a little bit more damage. Yeah, our opponent said they need more uh, flying protection for uh, for pests. And I was like, Aurelia certainly is a pest. Okay, so we do put them up to 13 total commander damage. And we'll go and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, basically, we can uh, once we get that trigger, that's going to be 8. That'll be exactly commander damage for next turn. So we'll see what they get down. If they end up tapping up for Prime Speaker Zagana, that'll work out perfectly for us. And that's one of the good things about running this Voltron deck. Is that you can get down stuff like Tajik and Stoneforge and Mystic. Kind of get this really good value going on the board. And then at the same time... Time, simply just, you know, your main win condition is dealing as much commander damage as possible with Aurelia. And if they don't have some sort of flyer in the air, you can get that additional power bonus and really kind of put some pressure on your opponent. Now, even if they do get some sort of flyer, we still have Aurelia's Fury to uh, kind of deal that damage and make sure they can't, uh, they can't block. Yes, no, excuse me, they're going to tap each creature dealt damage this way. Um, and that reminds me, so I got in during Return to Ravnica, and I used to draft a lot of it. And uh, one time I opened up Aurelius Fury, and I was like, oh, I'm really excited to get this card. And uh, this was before, like, I, I knew how to do steps in, like, the different steps of, like, magic turns. And so there was one game to where I had Aurelius Fury, and at the beginning of combat, if I just tapped down their creatures with Aurelius Fury, I was going to win the game on the back end. Uh, but I didn't know, I didn't have a beginning of combat step, like, turn stop set up and so it was one of the uh oh enters the battlefield okay exit the number of islands okay so there's only three islands so that still keeps Aurelia on the battlefield thankfully <laughs> it was really good um but yeah so i didn't know that like i didn't know how to do a stop at the beginning of combat and so i lost that match of uh return to Ma return to ravnica draft because uh, i couldn't cast Aurelia's fury and that's something that i've always thought about so <laughs> get to talk about it finally Mentor pushed it, yeah, yeah, it did. <laughs> and he, he's just, uh, he's got his nice little fur outfit, too. All right, so opponent's going to go for Fruit of the First Tree. Uh, whenever it dies, you gain X life and draw X card to exit that creature's toughness. So that's going to be a 4-3. But thankfully, your opponent's going to be basically just tapped out with nothing with the reach. Uh, that will allow us to swing across with some really good uh, Voltron damage. All right, so drawn to Warren Power Stone. I was going to swing across, get that additional plus 2-0. Onto Aurelia. And we'll get that Sword of the Animus trigger going too. Okay, it's going to be 8 8 coming across, and that will put them in exactly 21 total commander damage. Um, that was a pretty good showing by our opponent. You know, they could have gotten a lot more value down by getting down Prime Speaker, but thankfully, with something like Aurelia, you know, you keep that pressure on your opponent, it really kind of changes their game plan to where uh, they can't just swarm the board with a ton of creatures and draw a ton of cards. And this is pretty much exactly what the deck wants to do. You know, deal, they are sitting at 7 life, but that is t 21 total commander damage. So, now we didn't get a lot we didn't get down a lot of flashy Voltron pieces, but you can see where we can really get it done with something like Sword of the Animus and Hero's Blade. Simply just giving a really any sort of power toughness bonus is usually more than enough to put some really good commander damage pressure on our opponent. And we close it out. Really nice little um Boro showing right there. So if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome NFTG content just like this. And make sure to tap that bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.